Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here today with Lanka Town goalkeeper Paul Skinner. Welcome on, Paul. Cheers, Stephen. Uh, we're going to start with last Friday night. A 2-1 win for yourself down in Wexford. Uh, we are talking about it on Friday night by text and talking about it before this this morning. Um, tough game. <laughs> it was a tough game. I don't think with the, the standard that we the manager has now set for us and the way we, we've... We've been playing the previous weeks. It wasn't our best performance, but we've come away with three points down in a difficult place. Wexford had a couple of good results coming into the game, and they did make it difficult. But we were sort of blessed, blessed yeah. that we came out. We we the man sent off with twenty to go, and we defended well. Yeah. Defended well. The two boys at the back were excellent. Keep me protected. Keep me protected for people, <laughs> and. Uh, no, we've definitely played better and not got results this season. Yeah. So, take a positive out of it that we're away with three points yeah. on to next week. And are you surprised by this season as a whole with Wexford? Obviously, they came down in the Premier last year and they lost Shane Keegan and stuff like that, lost a couple of players. But i surprised they've been, I guess, so poor for the majority of the season, like down near the bottom of the league. Uh, yeah, I think they did lose a lot of players. They lost their manager. Um, I'm not saying that the the new man is not good. He's obviously, I think he's now starting to get um, a couple of good results or whatever way he's playing. I've noticed them, they're not as physical as they were over the last couple of years. Yeah. So that they are trying to play a bit more football. Yeah, you know, and the fourth division is turning into that. There's some very, very good teams. Yeah. They're all now, I remember the last time we played when we won it was 2013. And there's some really poor teams there. Yeah. But now every team... I remember being around that, yeah. at Lown, or at Lown that yeah. season and watching some of the first division yeah. games and it wasn't pretty to watch at times. Yeah. <laughs> but now there's some very good teams, very good teams. And they all t they all have a tactical awareness of what they're doing. You know, yeah. Cove, Cove beaten us twice this year and the first, the second game of the season, I think we played them and he counter-attacked us and it was probably the best counter-attack team we've played against or have seen they were excellent yeah. tactically brilliant Stephen Henderson done it he is doing a, a great job down yeah. there you know because I'm sure he has limited sources as well yeah limited resources sure. probably not a great area of the country for recruiting talent because obviously you've got such a big club in Cork just up the road mm -hmm. so I think teams like that kind of managing to recruit they're very young good players yeah very very young their average age I think one of the times we played them was 20 or 19 it was it was <laughs> Silly, like you yeah. know, but they're excellent, really good team. Yeah, exactly. And like Cork is a city, Cork is a county where young players kind of yeah. come out of their eyeballs, like we see them in the 19s league went national and everything like that. Yeah, first couple of years, Cork absolutely dominated yeah. it. Like, yeah, it's just I think the coaching down there looks pretty solid, and Didn't the fact that there's big catchment there, yeah, big catchment area, big club in Cork mm -hmm. that people can aspire to. And I think a lot are now seeing Cove as kind of that gateway. Yeah. Maybe mill yeah. up the playing and for the playing games. Like, yeah. And but if you if you were say John Carfield and you'd have very good on the nineteens. Yeah. You go right go play for Yeah, but you don't know whether I think Stephen Kenny is now at Limerick. I think the first season he came in he sent him out on Long Cow yeah. for the second half of that season and mm -hmm. he got a good bit bit of experience. Turned a few heads and then I think he decided himself to go to Limerick then to get first team football. But it's something that I think more clubs around the country should probably use a little bit more, like maybe even you know, the big clubs in Dublin or whatever, looking at yourselves and looking at, at Lowen and that kind of area where it's only an hour away, going, right, well, send one or two lads down there and get them first in games in the first division. Mm -hmm. Kind of more, they're, they're more precocious talents that they don't want to just hot house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that'd actually work quite well to the way the league could develop. And they had a great year last year, Colvin, and they, again, this year again, they're pushing, you know, I think Waterford are probably just doing enough now to... Yeah. Probably win the league. And what do you feel as a player kind of playing in the first division with Waterford this season? Um, a team obviously they've got a bit of money behind them and stuff like that, and the new owner comes in and everything. Do you look at that as a positive or a negative for the league? Um, it's a positive that there's yeah. such good standard of the players there in in Waterford. But from the start, of, from the first day of pre season, we never sort of. We thought we could win the league. Yeah. That was the our thinking in the dressing room. 
and even when we play them, any time we do play them, we feel we can beat them. Yeah. Um, it hasn't worked out for us this season, as obviously as we'd like to. But Waterford, yeah, they're just they've picked up a lot of one 0 wins. And that, that wins your legs, like. Yeah, they've that little bit, I think, of quality kind of up front and stuff like that as well, where they'll maybe not score 20 goals in the season, but they've lads like David McDade and stuff will get you important oh, two, goals. Oh, two, boys are, <laughs> two boys are very good. Now, we've we've good strikers. Unfortunately, Dave O'Sullivan's been injured for a, a long time this season. Um, yeah. And End has moved on. But we've brought in... Brought in Sam Bird and he won't play probably won't play out and out striker but he scored the other day, one on one, you know. Um and we've been Carl Chambers and Don Cowan and Jay Kelly's been up top, you know. We do have good quality. We've just yeah. there's times in games we've just we've probably hit the bar three times and get yeah. almost kicked off the line and you know, there are the games if you win them one nil you, You're right up there. You're right up there down, but yeah. just very frustrating this season unfortunately. Yeah. And um, we'll move on to better times in the first division then. We'll go back to 2013 with obviously Longford's rivals in Atlanta. Yeah, that um, was, yeah. We, on their Roddy and stuff like that. What was what was working with Roddy like in the first division and what was that season like as well? Excellent. I, I like I like Roddy. I I can see people actually getting, if they're playing against them, like really getting wound up or letting yeah. it affect I loved Roddy. He was excellent with us because he seen the team that we won the league with. Yeah. There was no superstars there, you know. We were just a very good bunch and Roddy got us in the right direction. And you're talking about the one 0 wins, I think we had six in a row or something yeah. like it was and that was the, just after the break and that that's how we ended up I think we're nine points off Longford. Played them. Which if we lost that season over, yeah, we yeah. beat them and then went on that run and I think it was six one nils in a row and I think we were unbeaten on fourteen. Yeah. And we ended up like winning the league at a canter, I think two or three games left. And then obviously the next season when you kinda of came up, it didn't really go to plan. Didn't. Um what went what went so wrong that season that went so right the year before? I think there was a big change. Obviously the manager went. Yeah. Um and Mick Cook came in. Mick Cook brought his players in. Um, and I don't know. I think if we just. When you dismantle a team like that, you lose. You can lose a lot of momentum. And as I said. You lose the essence of what that group was about the year before, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And the kind of spirit that the team had yeah. to. That they won. That, you guys won that league together and you just, Dragged ourselves through difficult points in the season and dragged ourselves, as I say, to a lot of one 0 wins and stuff mm-hmm. like that, which I think bring a team together even more than beat like beating a team five or six now. Yeah, we um, I think it's time to sort of we played slow. Got the first game of the season. In yeah, two thousand fourteen, and we were beating two one. We were one 0 up. Yes, you did. Yeah, Penal. And uh, remember the game. We were one up and they scored. Fairly late on, but if we'd have held out there and got a point, got a bit of momentum, then over that, yeah. it may have been different. Obviously, it's all lips and butts, so you can, can look into it. But we went and we lost our first ten games, then you know. Yeah. So obviously, performances then land on the the manager's head. Although players obviously have to take responsibility for that. Yeah. And then Keith Long came in, and he was excellent. And I don't know whether it was just. With the time of getting the season, like 10 games in, the team then started to finally gel together and then Keith came in and we sort of picked up a few good results and had a right bash at it and yeah. weren't too far off sort of having a miracle escape, but no, it wasn't it wasn't, a, it wasn't enough that year. It, yeah. was, um, yeah, it, was a, it was a low season for mine, I didn't... Wasn't one of my highlights. No. <laughs> you don't enjoy. You don't enjoy no. getting beat. You don't enjoy being in relegation battles and, and going down. Right, fair enough. You stay up. Yeah. Great, but now if you have any any sort of anything about you, you don't you don't enjoy getting beat week in week out. You know? um, and then obviously this is and Lanka fans. Well, Lanka fans won't be too happy for me asking this part here, but 
with what's going on in Athlone and stuff, does it kind of sadden you as a club that you have such a good memory with of winning the first division to see that some of the kind of, obviously there's some not so good people up at that club, but there's some of the people who've been a fabric of that football club for decades and decades that have just been completely run through the mud this year with what's gone on with the entire scandal with everything. I think any football fan will be sad to see what's happening. Yeah. Obviously there's a rivalry, but well, say for instance Celtic and Rangers, when Rangers went out of the league, right, there was a laugh about it, but you can guarantee Celtic missed them. Yeah. You know, and then when you come back it's great. It's not it's not nice to see everyone connected players and fans and people behind the background even guys getting accused of maybe being a part of it where maybe they're not and it's just of the betting yeah it just happens to be the kind of people see a mistake or a bad performance as yeah, the reason behind it tell you <laughs> people seeing some of the goals I conceded you, I'm surprised they haven't questioned me but, uh, no it is it's it's very tough very yeah. tough mentally to go through that you know um I know the good thing is that the players' union are there yeah. and defending. I know they're defending Igor anyway, yeah. um, which he needs. He needs good support. And the yeah. PFI will, will definitely look after him yeah. and, and make sure it comes out that he is innocent. Yeah. You know, and you'd certainly like to think that there is no gu- guilty people in the league of, of, of uh, match fixing because it's, it's not right. It doesn't belong in Ireland anyway. So oh, you mentioned in that whole instance, kind of the PFI or PFAI, and what they're kind of trying to do with that loan and everything like that at the minute, and supporting them, um, and they've done kind of a similar enough stuff with Bray trying to kind of figure out mm-hmm. what's going on there, and we had obviously with Dean Clark on here a couple of weeks ago, and as he said, he, um, actually had talked to Bray and stuff like that, and was close to joining them, and was told by the PFAI that basically join them if you want to but we've no idea where the money's coming from so you're kind of on your own with this one um have you ever been in an instance with that where the pfi have kind of told you that there's something a riot a club you're going to join and as an extension that how important to the pfi for especially the league of ireland where a lot of lads are kind of like yourself working and doing other jobs and for playing football at this level to be worthwhile, you need to be at somewhere that's kind of, I guess, not causing you stress over getting paid every week. <laughs> we seem to be, we had a good run of a couple of years where there was no money trouble, wasn't there? Yeah. It was great. I think after Monaghan, great things My first down. experience of it, I came into the league in 2008 and I signed with Trotter and a couple of months later they went bang. And the yeah. PFU, that was when I first sort of seen what the PFU can do. Yeah. Trotted it. Yeah, the money just stopped, and if it wasn't for the PFU, a lot of the boys wouldn't have got any money. Yeah. Know, they didn't get it all, but the PFU done their stuff, you know, and um, they got lads, I think, they got lads some, some money anyway. You know? Yeah. Um, they are vitally important. Yeah. Vitally important in the league, especially with, um, with financial issues regarding... Regarding asking them about teams and stuff like that, yeah. No, I I've never asked them myself. Um. And yeah, with the Bray situation, I think everyone sort of had. I think we all knew before the season started. We all had a kind of where yeah, is this money coming out of? Like everyone was just hoping it wouldn't. Yeah. But I don't know. At the minute, I'm I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Where they're, they're at, like basically, Dennis O'Connor has resigned. Well, I know. Apparently, they have enough money to go through the rest of the season because someone's come in and basically given them the money. Okay. Um, but beyond that, it doesn't look great for the type the playing squad that they have at the minute. I think it looks like it's going to be very much a one season thing for Bray, and then they're going to have to revert back to being very much part time. <laughs> yeah. They. What happens if? The, I don't know, is the players on two-year contracts? What happens then? I'd say that probably is. but They're entitled then to their money. You yeah. Know? So Unless they know. can get fees for them to go elsewhere. It seems a bit messy. I don't know the ins and outs of it to be... Yeah. Going in-depth about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I could be way wrong. Like, you know. Yeah. But. We'll move on then to, 
obviously the upheaval that you've had at Longford this season in uh, Alamachu's leaving. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you think he looked at me there going, what? I did that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Al leaving and then Neil Fan coming in. Obviously, you've worked on the matches now at Drogheda, Shells, and Longford. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Fennis come in, it's kind of his first yeah. stint as a manager yeah. in the League of Ireland. Um, what's kind of, what was it like working under, obviously Alan Matthews is a big name around the League of Ireland, what's it actually like to work under him, and what kind of went wrong at starting the season with yourselves? <laughs> what's he like? He, he's, he's, he's been around, he's won stuff, um, he knows He's he's been successful, pretty yeah. successful at Longford. Um, he assembled a great squad. What went wrong? Still don't know. Those teams we, those teams we battered, really battered at the start of the season, and we didn't win. Um, yeah. And that's it's just it's so frustrating. As yeah. for Alan, I'm sure for for the players, you know. I said earlier, you don't want to be... It's tough when you're in a relegation battle and you're not winning games. But the standards we set this season and we weren't winning games was more hurting more. Yeah. Some dressing rooms after games were just like a morgue. Yeah. Really, just you go in and it's... I can't believe we lost. How the hell did we lose that game? Yeah. You know? Um, no luck in front of goals. We have... It's, it's not a... Think that we don't have the quality. We do have the quality. We've Davy O'Sullivan, yeah. the record scorer for Longford. You know, and has scored many goals. You know, um, two lads who scored a lot of goals in the first division as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like we were lacking quality. It's just unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't win enough. We didn't, yeah. and Alan lost his, his job over it. And don't forget, Gary Cronin came in yeah. and was excellent. Um. He implemented his own ways of playing, and uh, it's you know with with Alan, you know the difference between Alan and say, well especially Neil is that Alan will be sort of risk free. Don't don't take many chances. Be compact. Yeah. Um, and that's that that is successful. That can be successful at every level. Ireland to do it. Have done it throughout the years, you know. He's won leagues and and cups with it. Um, but with Neil and and with Gaz, Gaz was implemented. It was in right. Listen, we're gonna play open. Yeah. Um, we're gonna try play football. And uh, Neil's first conversation with me and the goal and the other goalkeepers were, I want you to play out. Yeah. I want you to play out. If they have a man, if there's a man close to him, I don't care. Play out. If you lose the ball, I'm not gonna give out to you. Yeah. And it, it's it's sort of great to hear like a manager sort of going, listen, you try pass the ball out and you lose, and it actually happened to me last week. <laughs> but with that, he, he he pulled me during the week. He said, no, I told you I wanted to play yeah. out, you know. And it's it's great, it's great because there is some managers that will call you every name under the yeah. sun. They won't misplace for pass. making a mistake. But if you if you are going to in the league of Ireland, tell your players. To play out and play risky ish yeah. football. Well, it would be classed as in Ireland, it would oh, be. Oh, yeah. What are you doing playing out? What are you doing fast now? You're supposed to be kicking that yeah, up, yeah, as far as far up as possible. Use um, the wind. <laughs> you're going, yeah. We have the wind, just launch it. <laughs> yeah. um, incidents are going to happen. You're yeah. going to concede silly goals the odd time. Yeah. Um, but we've played. Some very very good stuff on there. Well, Alan at times as well, but more on that guys and Neil. Yeah. You can possibly see the philosophy that they're, the philosophy change. You know, it was I think Neil's first game, I had a back pass and I had two men running at me and I just yeah. kicked it like I had to. I was, I was under pressure and he told me, "What the fuck are you doing, Ken? What are you doing?" I was like, "What the fuck? Two men at me." He said, "Pass it." Okay, all right, great. Yeah. It's great. It, I love it. I've always like. I love. That's the way I'd like to always play football. You know, and yeah. um, I've seen. Pat's doing it throughout the years. I've always said the clerk is. I'm envious of you, like yeah. just clipping ball to the middle or clipping them out. Like. Yeah. 
But he is great feet as well for a keeper too. It's cool. kind of clarky. Ah, uh, it's yeah. He's. <laughs> it might be weird saying this for a, a League of Ireland player, but his yeah. distribution is world class. Yeah. It's it's scary how good it is. You know, it's. I remember the first time I played against him. Uh, he was a fingal maybe, and um, yeah, he hit a half volley, about fifty yards. Didn't go over any height like and mm. set Conor Bourne through on goal. I was like, what the hell was that like? Yeah, phenomenal. And there's others. Jared Doherty's amazing. Now probably better out of his hands than Clarkey. Yeah, Jared just loves that side volley to the halfway line yeah, out wide, does. and he's got it every time. Every yeah. time. And then Chikinski's come into Lego Rav as well this year, and his feet are yeah, Lego Rav as well. They actually a good point on the fact of kind of you talk about managers previously just really kind of wanting the ball gone and everything like that risk free yeah Stephen Bradley is kind of I think in the same ilk as Fenn with that where he wants his lads to play with the ball and stuff like that and you see Rovers fans when Chikinski gets a ball at his feet and they tell them to clear it long and all of yeah. this stuff when the philosophy of the team is kind of to spread the ball to the full back or try and play a pass into the midfield or whatever does that as a goalkeeper say down in Longford if you have the ball and you're looking for a pass and there's someone bearing down on you and the fans are kind of going just get rid of it just get rid of it but you know you're supposed to play it short does that play on your mind when in that moment when you've got the ball where it's like oh everyone's just shouting at me to get the ball clear like back to pictures of being a kid or whatever where people are shouting at you and you just get rid of it Um. <laughs> yeah not really if someone's bearing down it's then I'd, I'd be looking at my centre half to give me an option and yeah. if they don't give the option then you, to you've got to go with fans I think fans just get nervous I'm a fan yeah. I watch then you know you get nervous it was funny we were the first game we were playing Cabin Taylor I think and I was watching some of the we get clips all sent back to us and I was yeah. watching obviously my clips and uh, you know knocking out the centre half again just keeping Neil's like, listen, if there's nowhere to go, don't force it. Keep the fucking football. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Keep the boy, give boy, yeah. why you give make it 50 50 ball. You're keep the ball. Like. <laughs> but we were playing, and um, we'd obviously had it at the back for a little bit. And yeah. I hear the fans yelling, You're not going to score there. Get the, get the forward. Like, <laughs> and I found it. I had a laugh at it. But it was in, I remember being at Pats a few years ago when they were really good and yeah. really playing good stuff. And a fan shouting, That's this ticky tacky stuff. Just. Kick along, like it's, it's good. It's it's funny. It's yeah. funny, but it's yeah. I suppose it's people it. who just don't really get what the team are really trying to do and what football has kind of evolved into being. I, th- I think sometimes it can be classed as boring. Yeah. And if you're a football fan, and you want the goals or you want action and you want maybe the old school football fans that are watching it and they say. We've kept the ball in our own half for fifteen minutes here. Why? Yeah. Why? There's obviously reason behind it. Yeah. Move on to the next bit then. Um, obviously in twenty thirteen you won the league and you just went up to the went up to the Premier Division and then as we went talked down. about it went back down and everything like that. Um, how big in general is the jump from the first division to the Premier Division and? By extension, that we were just talking about with Neil and the way he's trying to play football in a more attractive way, do you think that would actually aid a side who are going up to the Premier Division that they do play a similar kind of style of football to what the top three, te- top three, four teams in the country are playing in your Bray, Rovers, Cork, and Dundalk this season? They're all playing mm-hmm. ball, they're not kind of hoofing the ball long like maybe Cork were guilty of in the past. Everyone's playing go football do you think that would help yeah. any side moving up to the Premier from the first division yeah I think Limerick are <coughs> exhibit A aren't they like, yeah. they've come up and played football and didn't look up out of place I think um, I think 2013 I think this the standard wasn't as good in the first division as it is now yeah. I think even Cabin Taylor are excellent yeah. they play good stuff Um Cole. So far to Josh isn't here now, he'd be loving this. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, UCD obviously play great football at the time. Waterford yeah. are, are strong, yeah. play good football and they can defend when you have to you saw many one else, I suppose. Yeah. Um who else have we got? 
I think you'll see a better ass long side next season. Yeah. If Rod if Rod stays, if I think Rod he's stays well and capable of building. Yeah, and if Everton stays, um, Everton pans out okay there. Like and yeah. the club don't go. I don't. Know. Don't you want to? I don't. Want, you'd like to just think that it gets sorted, everything gets settled, cleared up, and, and move on. You know. Yeah. Um, and then there's ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think you do need to play. It's gone with the modern. You see how good Dundalk are now. They've yeah. raised the game. So what do you do? Do you just go and play long ball against them? Probably. No, they I don't play, think so. Like I think they're a team who I think teams like a Dundalk or even a Cork or whatever, um, Cork this season more so than that. I think they kind of half expect teams to come and try and play the ball long at them and try and get in amongst them and everything like that. Whereas we've seen obviously in Europe with them in the last couple of weeks where teams come out and play a bit of ball against them and. They seem to struggle that little bit more because maybe they don't have the quality of another side in Europe. So I think playing football against a team more evens yourselves out than maybe in the past teams just here from the ball forward. Managers seem to think, oh, that'll even it out for just more physical than them and we get the ball up quickly mm. and switch the play quickly rather than trying to play through midfield and everything. I think actually the way football has evolved now is... If you can pass the ball as well, you can catch a team cold if they're not on their game more so than if you're just playing long ball because all you need, if you're just hitting the ball to a striker, is the two centre halves to have a good game. Mm. If you're playing football, you need your entire team to have a good game for the other team not to beat you. Yeah, I um, I don't think Dundalk struggle in your. No, I think they were I unlucky think, against Rovers. Cork, Cork weren't too bad either. Rovers, Rovers struggling against Malada. Yeah, uh, I think. Derry were probably the only team that struggled, yeah. if you're going to say. But they, were but they got the toughest draw, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Playing Mitchell, but, <laughs> um, but it's some simple as in, if you play long ball, you're not going to have possession. So yeah. you're going to do more running. You're going to do more chasing the ball against the Dundalk. So if you're playing Dundalk and you smash it long, they get the ball, you're running chasing. If you keep the ball for five, ten minutes, yeah. energy levels are better. You can probably defend better. And you've got the ball. If you, if you have the ball... Chances are you, you can create, you might have a chance. Yeah, it's much just, easier to keep your shape with the ball. Yeah, than if you're, if you're kicking it long, you're hoping that there's a flick on, you're hoping of a mistake, you're hoping, you just, yeah, you're just hoping something goes wrong. But if you have yeah. the ball, it's in your own, in your own hands, like you can create your own chances better yeah. that way. And then we move on to, obviously you moved out to Celtic at 16. Um, peaked at 16 yeah. and got the move over and stuff like that and then she ended up back at Drogheda and ended up back in the league and stuff but one of the things when I was kind of looking about talking to you when I was like kind of researching stuff yesterday evening and that um, one of the things I kind of noticed about it was I seen that you were at Celtic and stuff like that and I knew it before um, but it kind of struck me that Sean, like Shawnee McGuire and Kevin Connor are gone and there's mm-hmm. Daryl Horgan and Andy Boyle went last year and stuff like that. Why do you think it is as a goalkeeper in the league that the last goalkeeper I can remember really going to England and making an impact is Brian Murphy when he left Bowes? And Alan even Manus at, as well. And Alan Manus when he went to Scotland as well. Apart from that, you're kind of, and even at that, the two of them are over five years ago now, the both of them. Why do you think the goalkeepers don't seem to get the move? Is it that they aren't maybe as good as the outfield players in the sense of the League of Ireland or is it just that maybe they just aren't being looked at by English teams or Scottish teams as much as they probably should be? That's a good question. Um, I only have good questions. I think, I personally think it's a size thing. Yeah. I think, I know Alamanis wasn't the biggest, my God, he was a young man. Yeah. He was huge. <laughs> The man who seemed um, to spend a little bit of time in the gym and his, uh, he was the ultimate yeah. pro. Any stars I heard, he was the ultimate pro. And Brian Murphy was excellent. Yeah, he was just probably the best keeper. The two of them have been the best that I can yeah. remember. And then before that, I'm kind of thinking back, and it's probably David Ford as the last one to leave David and then Ford, make a big yeah. impact. Like I said, Brian Murphy and David Ford both now drop down to League Two with like with my club, mm-hmm. and they're the best examples we can kind of. Obviously, Forty, you know got as far as playing international games for Ireland and everything like that but we're kind of naming three lads there and 
none of them have gone over and had the effect of a Seamus Coleman or a Shane no, Long or no. Kevin Doyle or anything like that. I think I I do think I think if an English manager or scout come over, I think the first question they ask is size. Yeah. Because um technically there's some very good goalkeepers. Yeah. Um I think if say Schlings and Null McNulty were six foot four, six foot five. Yeah. You know, they'd be they'd, they'd be, be away. well gone, yeah. yeah. They'd be away. Um and that's only two of those other guys, you know, Clark he's Clark he's excellent. Um Gaz Rogers, of yeah. course. Gaz has done well. You get yeah. got into the other setup and uh, by all means was no uh, wasn't out of place. Yeah. Well, he's a big lad at the same time. He kind of comes from a guy background and stuff like that, so he's probably more used to the physical side of that level of football too. Yeah, I think though when you go into an Irish setup, I think when you're actually in this, when you're in, yeah, in the, I think then your technical ability comes out. By all means, from from this news, it you stayed in the squad for a year, maybe pretty much, yeah, in and out of the squad. Kind of and the far choice guy, kind of. Covering the bench and stuff like that. He listened, he, which, was, he was involved. He was yeah. involved. It was great to see that O'Neill and Keane are, are interested in goalkeepers. I know McNulty and second choice down in, in Cork, the two of them trained. Uh, Alan Smith. Alan Smith. Um, yeah. Two of them trained when the Irish squad down fought Ireland. So it's great to see that. It's great to see yeah. that more players are getting in. I just like, I would've, it would have been great to see Sean McGuire or Kevin O'Connor. Yeah, Andy Boyle. It would have been nice to see Andy Boyle and Daryl Hogan getting their caps while playing in the league. Yeah, not immediately after they yeah. left the league because it happened. It happens to everyone. Yeah, Keith Fahey same Fahey's thing. Man, yeah. yeah, like the second he moves away, Grant in the Irish squad. Yeah, it? the same thing. Like I even on a different sense. Like I obviously get stick for it whenever I talk about him on this, but. Ender Stevens has been for me the best left back in the football league for the last two years. Well, he was well with it last yeah. year, yeah. And he's been part of his playing the season the last two years in the team. He got to playoffs and then won the league the year after. And because he's in League Two, he doesn't get looked at whatsoever. But he's now moved to the championship and the lower end of the championship team. He's just got up from League One, and suddenly there's you know newspaper articles and stuff about oh he's he has to be in the squad. He's got all this qualities all these assists in the last two years and stuff like that. But he's still the same player as he was six months ago. Mm -hmm. He just happens to have moved to another club and been training with them for a week. Yeah. Now, why do you think it is that the national managers kind of I, are comfortable bringing lads in to be around the squad and use them as bodies and training, but won't really call them into the squad until they've left? Do you think it's the stigma around it that a lot of the bar stealers, I guess... Kind of have for the league that oh he he's shit because he's in the league of Ireland. I think, um, I think, the manager will probably look at it and say, I need to see him at what he would regard as a higher level. Yeah. The championship or Premier League, or so, and then he'll say right if he can do it, then we'll bring him into the squad. Yeah. Um, and that's I think that's. Probably the reason it's very unfortunate because now the standard in the League of Ireland is a lot better than what people think. Yeah. You know, Dundalk have raised the game, Cork are flying this season. And there's other teams now that over the years will, will implement their own style. Like, you know, Rovers over a couple of years now will be yeah. challenging. I, you'd assume you'd assume that's the target for them. Yeah, with the amount of kind of lads who were in the Ireland, Ireland 17 set up and stuff like that, yeah. who were around the Rovers Academy and everything like yeah. that. They've made a big sort of input in that over the last year or two. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you'll see they've already had a few 16, 17 year olds now playing. So, yeah. I'm hoping over the next five or six years they'll break in, they'll be proper first team players. And yeah. The last little thing I want to ask you about, and that's essentially, essentially what we've just spoken about there with Rovers. Do you think that model now with the academy system and bringing players in from a younger age and having kind of a training facility like you'd have for a Premier League club or a Championship club or whatever. Do you think that's the way forward for the league in general? Do you think how that is that how it's going to progress by the bigger teams, maybe Dundalk doing it or Cork doing it or whatever, 
and then over time those players filter out and they'll filter around the league and the quality of the league kind of improves as a whole because of that yeah I think well everyone has to now have a 17s 15s as well yeah 15, 17, 19 so yeah it will improve I know Longford have just opened their academy last week and by all means it was a success yeah so little stuff like that you know you're, you're getting the players in as you were saying Um you're assuming it's probably better coaching I, yeah. I'm not sure um, well Rovers I think have kind of filled theirs with Shane oh, Roberts uh, uh, Shane Roberts Royce was involved there, Royce was in there yeah. Pajo, Damien Duff, all of that kind of yeah. level of people who are ex-pros. Like. <laughs> Damien Duff is your under-15 manager. Like. Excellent, isn't it? Like, yeah. Brilliant. What are it's gonna, it, it, I think it'll bring in a lot of lads who kind of... Yeah. Maybe they would... It makes me, even me feel old to say like that. Bring in... Oh, they hear, they've heard so much about stories about Duffer in his prime and stuff like that and then so I've watched them towards the end of his career and stuff like that. You wonder how many <laughs> kids are going in and going... I've heard of him. Didn't he play in that Henri handball? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was in the team at the time and did the L2 World Cup last. Yeah. Only won the league, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I... Like, we spoke about how... Corks on the ninth ends are always strong, and UCD always have a. Yeah. So, you know, UCD. I know because my brother won the league and yeah. the cup with them, so <laughs> they've they've been excellent the last couple of years, and you can see that now in their team. Yeah. A lot of them are playing. A lot of them are. Well, the entire squad now is yeah. in college. There's now obviously the the Jason Burns and kind of before that even Mick Leahy and stuff was back there for a year or so after he left the college, yeah. and that they seem to have done away with that for now, and it's kind of all just lads who are in. UCD or are kind of of that age. Yeah, yeah. Um. So you're, you're. But every team has to have it anyway. So yeah. I don't know what the, if the setups are as blockbuster names as the way Rovers have it. But listen, it's it's a good thing, and it's to probably keep players from going away. You know, keep them here for that extra year. Yeah. Have them playing in the competitive league. In a in a in a league of Ireland team. Well, look, if teams are if you're bringing players through, and obviously the top ones, if they're in the Rovers Academy or whatever, it's going to benefit Rovers before it's going to benefit oh, sure. benefit anyone else. But if they're bringing in young lads, even like a Trevor Clark, who's in the first team now, but is being linked with five hundred grand moves yeah. away to five or six teams in the Premier or Premier League in the Championship, that's going to bring a lot of money into the clubs because they're not. They're coaching that lad from 15, 16 mm-hmm. years old, and yeah. then he's coming in at 19, 20, being sold off at 20, 21 for a big profit, and then all of that money is going back into the club then. Mm-hmm. But even if you get them at under 15, yeah. um, for a year, you know, you're, yeah. due, you're entitled then to, to something. But if you can get them in at 15s, you might be able to say, listen, we have a full time sort of setup here, you could, whatever it is. You can come and do your car, your schooling, or I don't yeah. know what the setups are like in, in most teams. Um, well, like you got then they've got examples then to show them of look, oh, we're not just spoofing you here. Like oh, yeah. look, Trev Clark is gone. He had to come back from Middlesbrough. Like it didn't work out for him there. But if he'd have stayed, he'd probably be at a bigger club already now, because he but because he left and came back, he's probably a year or two behind all, in his all development. Lives and butts of course, yeah. yeah. All lives and butts if. Like if I was in the same position, would I move away at sixteen? I probably would. Yeah. I think I. I was half telling. People I wasn't, and then um, I was gonna stay and do my leaving here, and then I went to Celtic on trial and just loved it. Yeah. They offered us like Jesus, yeah, of course yeah. I'll be there. So it's tough. Then, you know, I I do understand that it's it's a difficult sort of decision to make if you do have a club hounding you at 15, 16. Yeah. But now with the the way the, the leagues have set up, they are setting up the way it is in England, so just maybe there might be that pull to keep the the lads, and of course they're going to say stay in next year, do your leaving, which is important, because yeah. numbers are silly to be on the boys that come back. Yeah. Very, now I don't have a leaving, so <laughs> I, I can't be preaching about it. But um, if you could go back now, you probably maybe would have stayed the extra all, year. Or so. I, look, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm pretty yeah. like I've, uh, 
of a family of wife, kid, mortgage. Yeah. Couldn't be any happier, you know. Yeah. In life, um, just a shame we're not winning the league. Like, <laughs> perfect, but that's if you ask me, would I change it? No, because where I'm at now is I've I've landed on my feet, you know. I've blessed of a job as well. Yeah. But not everyone's that lucky. Yeah. Exactly. I do. I do see myself as lucky. Yeah. I land, got that good job, and I'm playing football still. Yeah. I have a wife now, a kid, God, couldn't be any happier outside yeah. of football. I got so, in football as well, football. <laughs> so then f- we'll finish on, um, what's, what does next season and kind of the future for you hold? Are you hoping to continue? Obviously you say you've got a job, you've got kids now and a wife and everything like that. Kid. Don't, don't give her any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, I meant kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Skins. <laughs> um, what does what does a hole for you going forward then? Are you looking to kind of play in the league as long as possible? Is there any chance that you go, right, if I have a good season and someone in Scotland offers me a year or two's deal, would you go and take something like that full time? Or are you happy to be playing part time and having your job? Um. Well, uh, there's a lot of ifs and buts there. Yeah, it's the age of the main, for the any ma- league or The main player. one is you've got to put in a, you've got to get the attraction, which means you need to be playing. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I'll worry about that first. Yeah. Um. But at the end of the season, like I do most every season, at the end of the season, a week or two, a holiday or two. Um, yeah. And then. Wait for the phone to ring, you know. Yeah. Would I like to, of course, I'd, I'd like. I'd like. I'd like to stay at Longford. I. I don't. Yeah. I know I've had a few clubs, <laughs> but I don't like moving. I always yeah. like staying. But Longford, Longford don't get the credit that they should regarding how yeah. good a club they are. Yeah. You know, you don't. In the time of good football clubs. There's never really much trouble oh, around no, Longford. Like no. that seems very much the lads. They get paid. They play their football. They looked after everything like that. It just seems like a genuinely it is good league of Ireland. The stadium's club. fantastic. The pitch yeah. at the minute's up there with the best of the best. Yeah, you know, at the minute, we have a very good manager who's a very good young manager. Yeah, yeah man, guys, guys are there about young, have their ideas and put implementing them. Um, and you'd like to think that I know this season. You're assuming this season's a write off, you know, as in we in won't get anyway. we won't get yeah. um promoted, which is a shame, but you have to be aiming to get promoted next season. Doesn't yeah. matter who comes down. Yeah. Um and that that will be the aim of the manager has set massively high standards already. And yeah. you can only imagine if he gets a proper pre season under him what our standards would be. But yeah. the group that we have, yeah, standard is to win every game win the league this year hasn't worked but yeah hopefully well, next year well we'll leave it there then hopefully we'll have you on again in the future yeah. for, um, best luck for the rest of the season Cheers. best Thanks. luck with a cup run as well because yes, yes that's yes. something that she's going to look forward to just getting the cup Sligo home Sligo, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so a little cup shock to start off the shock it won't be a shock for us no no, no you got to go to <laughs> take it you got to go to try and win the game that's it you yeah, don't go exactly. to play to lose like you know so yeah. oh, we'll be going to win of course it's a cup yeah. as well Exactly. Right. Well, best luck to the rest of the season, Steve. Talk Not to you bad. again Appreciate soon. Yeah. Thanks Cheers. Very much. Cheers. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, lads. And we'll be back again with another video. Um, put in the comments below and stuff what players, League of Ireland players, or anything else you'd like to see on the show next. And we'll try and get them into chat. Until next time.